Hi everybody, I'm Percy from England. You're watching my mate Diesel and his pet human trucker Josh trucking around the US and Canada. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. Bye. Jeez, oh, did you eat all your treats? Did you eat all your treats before you ate your breakfast? Good boy. That's my boy. My truck is extra staticky today. Like, everything I touch is going t -t 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 snapping me. Or sn snapping me? Shocking me. Shocking me. It's snapping. My truck is very shocking this morning. Good morning. How you doing? We're in uh, Johnson's Creek, uh, Wisconsin. I keep wanting to say Johnson's Creek, Michigan. It's Battle Creek, Michigan. Come on. Johnson's Creek, Wisconsin. I'm just gonna run inside the marvelous little building there, grab myself some liquid life, and we're gonna go pick up our load. They're expecting us there at 11 a.m. I wanted to get loaded much earlier than that because it's Christmas and I wanna go home, but that's okay. This is better than going all the way home empty. So instead of losing about $500 in fuel, I get paid to go home for Christmas. And then I get paid after Christmas as well as deliver it. So let's get this show on the road. I want to get home. We have a Christmas gathering tomorrow. And I'm going to be a little late by the looks of it. I was late for it last year too. It's my in-laws gathering. It's my, my wife's mom's side. I think I was late for it last year as well. But I, I made it. I was there. So I don't want to be as late this year. I wanted to be there on time. You know, let's just stop talking about it. Let's get out there. Let's let's get it done. Let's get there. Well, here we go, ladies and jelly beans. 94 East, Milwaukee. This way. You better stay green. You better stay green. I'm warning you. Good lights. Easy, bud. You had a red light. Just about ran into me. Okay, let's get our freight. So our Christmas gathering tomorrow apparently starts at about 1 o'clock. I pick up my freight here in Milwaukee. My appointment's at 11. I'm hoping it's not going to take more than two hours to get loaded and tied down. And then we have 24 hours to get home. It's gonna be tight. I'm gonna be late for the gathering. I'm just hoping I'm not gonna be that late. Cause I want to bring, uh, I want to bring Diesel Continue home. Up this road for 44 kilometers. And then uh, show up there in my pickup, and I have a chance to shower and change at home. But that's that's a little ways out of the way yet. So, like I told Britt, I can't really make any promises or say what's gonna happen until tomorrow or until tonight, maybe. After at least find out how long it's going to take to get loaded. I hope it's not going to be complicated. I called them yesterday and they said it's going to be pallets. It sounded like pallets of snow clearing equipment. I'm like, okay, well, if it's on pallets, that sounds like it'll be pretty quick to load and tie down. But if it's snow clearing equipment, I mean, is that going to be like a snow plow I got to chain down? I mean, that wouldn't take too long either, but no idea what to expect. I've never been here. Once again, trucking flying by the seat of our pants let's just see what happens just finished loading here took uh, longer than we wanted it to but i think you'll understand why this first part has to be tarped that's going to bc this is all going to bc that's going to bc 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 this is going to alberta these yellow things and everything on the back here is going to saskatchewan so uh yeah, that took a little while. <laughs> I don't know what it all is, but snow clearing equipment. These are plows, obviously. Uh, time to go. Let's go home for Christmas. 
took me a little while to tie it down, so they got me to go park here in front of this dock. Now I gotta figure out how to get out of here. All right, so I'm gonna back up a little bit. We're definitely not overweight. We're not even close. I'm not worried about that. Well, that took a lot of equipment. That was a mismatched load, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Uh, that wasn't very fun, but hey, it's better than going all the way home empty for Christmas, right? Do not enter. Okay, we should probably not go down this way then. Okay, do not enter. How am I supposed to go? Okay. This will keep backing up here. Go the other way. I know you can't see where I'm backing up. Neither can I. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know where I'm going. Back our way in here. This would have been a good time for the head cam, but too late for that now. Sneak in beside this other truck that's here. One thing that's good about the Volvo, it turns on a dime. And I've got a very short wheelbase, so I can pretty much get in and out everywhere. There we go. Exit this way. Diesel, we found the right way. What a weird load. I don't like these loads. What can you do? We're gonna get out of the city here. We're in Milwaukee, uh, North Milwaukee, right on the north side of the city. Or our first rest area or truck stop or something. I need to grab a coffee anyway. I'm gonna check all our straps and our securement job. Open sesame. Trucker Josh wants to go home for Christmas. Out of the way. Barbed wire. They really don't want people coming in here. It's funny, we gotta buy all our snowplow equipment from all the way down here. They don't even have snow here. <laughs> Which way do I wanna go? Right. I want to go to the right. Paperwork. Here we go, Diesel. In 100 meters, turn left on North 76th Street, WI 181. Man. Good thing this load pays pretty decent. I'm gonna have to babysit this load quite quite a bit on the way home. Make sure that nothing's shifting, moving around. Not my favorite. Not my favorite load to pull, that's for sure. Making our way out of the city. Keeping our eyes open for a place to pull over and check our load. Everything looks good in my mirror, from what I can see. My tarps, I need to tighten up a little bit, though. They're, they're a little bit poofy on the highway. I got poofy tarps. The wind gets in underneath there and not at highway speeds it, it it poofs it up and when it gets all poofy i can't see around it to see the rest of my load in my mirrors so i gotta tighten that down a little tighter it's not like it's a big problem it's just enough so that i can't see behind there but i mean i'm sure people would be honking at me by now if something was falling off right <laughs> uh i'm confident in how i tied it down it's not going anywhere but I still need to stop here somewhere and uh, it's been about 20 minutes. I like to stop after the first 20 to 30 minutes just to check the straps, tighten them up a little bit, you know, just make sure nothing's gonna fall off. I wouldn't wanna, you know, ruin someone's Christmas. Have my freight fall off onto their nice little white Tesla with no plates. Look at that thing. Look at that thing. Well, look at it. I wonder where the remote control is.
I was so excited when Tesla said they were making a pickup truck. I was so pumped. And then the Cybertruck was revealed. I'm like, I don't want a doorstop. What is that? I don't want a futuristic looking truck. I don't want a geek mobile. I want a tough, rugged man's truck. You know what I mean? I want it to look like it. Look at this thing right here on the left. That's a Dodge. I'll, I'd take that over the Cybertruck. All right? That at least looks like a truck. But I, I know he's like, he's trying to challenge our perception of what pickup trucks look like. You know, don't do that. No, I'm happy with the way pickup trucks look. <laughs> Just give me a pickup truck. I don't want this. What is that? Big triangle. I understand why they did it. Like they had to build it because it's an exoskeleton truck. It doesn't have an actual frame like a regular pickup. And they have to make it that triangle. The same reason why the Honda Ridgeline, when it was originally released, it had to have that triangle, that, that sort of little arc at support so that when you put weight in the back or when you tow a trailer that supports the frame because it's an exoskeleton so it's for strength reasons there's a reason why it's a triangle it's it's not just to look dumb it actually has functionality i just think it looks dumb i think the the, the dumb lookingness of it outweighs the functionality of it i just want a truck so i don't know maybe they'll make some some adjustments. The Rivian truck looks really nice, but the Rivian truck's too small. That's like a mid-size. I don't want a mid-size. I want a manster. I want a, I want a full-size 4x4. I want something that will turn heads, but at the same time will look good. They'll turn heads for the right reasons, right? I don't want to I don't want a vehicle that turns heads because people are like laughing at me or wondering what that is. I want them I want to be turning heads because it looks that good. Wow, I've never seen that before. That is a nice looking truck. That thing looks tough. Like that Toyota over there, that white one, that looks like a truck. Like, ah, uh, uh, we've talked enough about it. I got, I went on a rant. That's my rant for today. You're welcome. Still looking for a place to park here. There's got to be a rest area soon. If not, we could always pull into Johnson's Creek. That's where we started the day. Got a trucker beside me, so I mean, if something was going on with my freight, he'd be flashing his lights at me, waving around, trying to get my attention. So I know, I know, Trucker Josh, this is why you need a CB radio. I know there are there are good reasons of why a CB radio is useful. I just don't use mine. I haven't plugged it in in like seven years. Oh, there was a truck stop in there. Oh, why didn't I go in there? You need a bigger sign, bud. I didn't even know you were there until it was too late. Now yeah, well, I'll go to the next one. Yeah, it, it's good to have a CB radio. I, I, I know I was a little hard on the CB radio people uh, the other day. I, I, personally, I do think it's outdated technology. That's just my own opinion though, but it, it still has good uses. And it's still a good idea to have one if you want one. I don't want one can't understand anybody on there anyways. Come on. What? Come on. Huh? English. And it is English. You know it's English because you understand like every like sixth word. But and for some reason, whenever someone picks up a CB radio, they turn into like deep south Louisiana, Mississippi southern drawl to the max like no one can understand what you're saying buddy you have wisconsin plates come on <laughs> pronounce your words proper i can't understand you man <laughs> just shut the radio off i can't understand you anyway man <laughs> you know it's true don't shake your head at me everybody on the cb radio everybody on the radio turns into a deep south louisiana mississippi guy you know it's true It's Christmas. I don't care. I don't care. I'm having a cookie. I'm having two ginormous cookies. Oh, I walked in there and they're baking fresh cookies and stuff in there right now, right? And oh, I walked in there and I said, it smells like Christmas in here. <laughs> That's one thing I sort of noticed about in the U.S. 
everyone's much more individual individualistic like if you go into a store and say something like it smells like christmas in here everyone sort of just looks at you kind of weird and like all right that, all right cool yeah no. they don't say anything really whereas in canada people would more so be like yeah it's awesome eh JB, it's just my own personal experience. It's almost Christmas. I'm eating cookies. All diets are on hold for the rest of December. Just saying. No diet counts during Christmas. It's Christmas. Eat the cookies. I want to get far enough today that I don't have to stop for my half hour break tomorrow. So I want to get closer than eight hours to the border. So that's just a waste of a half hour if I don't have to stop turn for it. Turn left and then turn right in 15 meters. What do you mean turn left? Oh, there's a truck there now. Because, yeah, every eight hours you got to stop for a half hour break in the U.S., right? But that's not a law in Canada. So if I go to, like, let's say I only have six hours to the border tomorrow, well, I don't got to stop for my half hour. I just go to the border, and then as soon as I cross the border, I don't have to stop for my half hour anymore. Save myself a half hour. So I want to get at least under eight hours to do to go tomorrow which shouldn't be a problem i have like eight almost nine hours available to me today yet i will have to stop my half hour today though turn right and then turn right in 80 meters this wasn't it yet i'll have to stop later because uh really we're just getting our day started even though the sun's going down already we're just pretty much getting rolling here <laughs> side of the road at this side of the road it was clear that they were warning us of a policeman up ahead and what do you know we went over the crest of the hill and there he was pointing his radar gun at us and I got to thinking I've talked about this before is why are they warning us that there's a cop there what if one of these people around me here on this side of the highway are child traffickers who just kidnapped a child right before Christmas? How tragic would that be? And they're going a little bit too fast. And had you not warned them, they would have been pulled over by the police and that child would have been saved and got to go home and spend their, their uh, Christmas with their family or just gone home instead of being trafficked who knows you know the kidnapped kids here they bring them down to mexico they smuggle them across and you never see them again take away their passport and they're stuck there people seem to think that warning people that there's a, a photo radar or a, a radar guy up ahead is helping it, it i don't think it's necessary if people are speeding let them get pulled over you shouldn't be speeding. Either you warn everybody that there's a cop up ahead. You know the bad people see your warning too. And they go, thank you very much. I could have gone to jail right there. You know? 
I've always thought of that. Says, Why are people warning people that there's a cop up ahead? No, 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 no. Let them pull them over. Might be saving a life. You never know. You never know. You know, speed limit's about 70 miles an hour here. If that kidnapper is going, you know, 80, 85, they get pulled over. Well, they're gonna have to explain who the child is in the back seat and why the child has no ID and why the child is saying, help me. <laughs> but no, 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 you wanna warn everybody that there's a cop up ahead, so they're not gonna get pulled over. I know that's the way I see it. How do you guys see it? I'll leave the vlog on that note. I think that's a good point of discussion because everybody uh, got upset. Well, not everybody, there's people that got upset last time I said, stop warning people of cops. When I explain it in that way, does that change your mind at all? Let me know down below in the comments. I never warn people that there's a, a cop up ahead. I say, if you're speeding, well, you're speeding. Good morning, you fine person. You sitting there on your phone, clicked on Trucker Josh. Great choice. Great choice. Don't forget to click that subscribe button while you're here. I'm making a new video every day. So we're in uh, Minnesota right now. We're screaming down the highway towards home. We're getting home for Christmas. We're gonna be home for about a week, so get ready for some home time footage. And probably missing a few days here and there because it's Christmas. You're watching this after Christmas already, probably closer to New Year's. So I hope you had a good Christmas and I hope you have a happy, prosperous New Year. I got as far as I could last night yet. And I'm doing the rest now. Uh, I've got a family gathering with my wife's mom's side this afternoon. They start at 1, but they're eating at 4. I'm going to get back to work around 1, as long as I don't get hung up at the border or anything. And then i got to go home and then go to the city. So I'll probably be there around 4 o'clock, just in time for the food. <laughs> I hope they don't think that I'm just showing up to eat. <laughs> hang out a little while after and then that was that would be Christmas number two we got Christmas number three on the 24th with my family with my, my mom and dad's house we got Christmas Day morning with me and Britt we got Christmas Day afternoon and evening with uh, Britt's dad's side I think that's it for Christmases what is that that's one two three or five Christmases. That's it. And then after that is Boxing Day and uh, home till after Christmas and then we start heading towards Saskatchewan, Alberta and ending off in British Columbia. We are now across the line. We're north of the border. Welcome to Canada. We cross the line, yeah. There's now officially nothing standing between us and Christmas other than a bit of pavement. And this guy. Good thing I can go around him. So, uh, we passed the border. We're through the border. No, no holdups there. The scale was closed. No holdups there. There is nothing. Unless if I get, a, get pulled over for some nonsense reason, because I'm not speeding. I'm not doing anything bad, so I shouldn't get pulled over. There shouldn't be any more delays. get home for Christmas. I'm getting home a little earlier than I thought I would, so that's a little surprise. I thought it was going to take a little longer and be a few more delays, but no. Father Christmas is watching out for me. Getting me home. So I have this freight beneath me. Uh, I've got the first drop in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Second drop in Atchison, Alberta. That's just west of Edmonton. Right close to the West Edmonton Mall there where we were at the other day. And then from there I head on down to the lower mainland, down to the south western corner of the country, Vancouver, British Columbia. Me down on the west coast. It's a different world out there, man, I'll tell you what, it's like a different country. Totally different. As soon as you get past Hope, BC, you get into that lower bowl mainland, you get past, I'd say Abbotsford is the last recognizable city. And you get into Vancouver, suddenly you're like, what is this? When did I teleport? It's just different. 
It's, it's, it's different. Really different. But hey, I don't think Christmas is as big as a as big of a celebration down there. But hey, we'll convert them yet. Christmas is the best time of year. So you're watching this probably closer to the new year. I hope you had a very Merry Christmas and I hope that you have a happy, prosperous new year. The load under me, they want it in the new year, so I'm not too sure when we're gonna leave with it yet. Gotta get a hold of them and figure things out, create delivery appointments. For now, uh, we're just concerned about getting home. Like I said, there's nothing standing in between us and home now other than this pavement in front of us and the law saying I can't go faster than this.